going through the earth of sickness. And it's coming to the children of the wicked one, sickness. But the Lord says it will make the earth tremble. But in your life, the curse has been reversed. See some kind of, I think it's some kind of sickness, some kind of plague. But this is an international thing, and we really need to pray against this. We really need to pray against this right now. It's a, it's like a plague trying to develop in the world. But it is a disease. It's some kind of plague, some kind of, I'm searching for the word. It's, it's not quite a plague. It's, not, it's, it's a something, it's like a pestilence almost. An epidemic maybe, yes. Coming is trying to develop. People are going to take great advantage of this. This is not good. So we stop it where it is right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. I saw an aircraft disaster, but I saw a missile blow one in half. Fox News alert now, a Ukrainian jet crashing in Iran minutes after takeoff yesterday, killing all 176 people on board. It was brought down by an Iranian missile, according to U.S. sources who were talking with NBC News. The Lord said to us, meet me in the temple at the 11th hour.
and every nation watching. Breathe on them, Lord. That revival may come. Through chiefs of tribes, through mayors, governors, prime ministers, presidents. to the Lamb of God. Let's give God praise and honor and glory all over the world, wherever you may be watching, whoever you may be, wherever you may be listening. We give honor and glory to God, and I want to welcome you into the 11th hour, the prophetic program where we make 11th hour decisions because we hear 11th hour proclamations and declarations from the Spirit of the Most High. Hallelujah. Let's just rejoice one more time. How we give God honor and glory and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. I want to welcome everybody in again, and I want to thank you so much for supporting the 11th hour program. Robin and I was in her office this morning. My wife and I, and we were weeping over different offerings and prayer requests that have come in, and it humbles you so. It humbles you so that people would consider it a voice to hear them, to hear God. And it's an humbling thing, and I have to, I can't help but weep when I see them come in because needs are real and people's needs are very real and I want you to know someone wrote this morning and said if you read this if you happen to see this I want you to know I saw it I saw it and we listened and we prayed and we prayed over your families it's such an honor hallelujah well I want to uh, tell you some things today by the spirit of God and uh, I started writing on December the 19th about this, about these things, and the Lord continued all the way until this morning, preparing for today. The Lord says to me, and so I write this down, we are locked in battle for the soul of this nation. You know, and I realize a lot of other nations are watching right now, and Oh, I'm so grateful. But see, America's pivotal. The United States is very pivotal to every nation because it touches every nation in some form or fashion. And it sends so many missionaries around the world to every nation. And uh, the Lord said to me, he said, we are locked in battle for the soul of this nation. The prophets had to come on the scene like Elijah to stretch themselves on a generation of people that has lost their souls. And I'm speaking of this nation right now, the United States. Right now, the prophets are stretching themselves on a generation that have lost its soul, putting their eyes on its eyes and their mouth on its mouth, to bring them back into the land of the living so that this generation can see what the prophet sees. Mouth on their mouths so this generation can hear and say what the prophets say. We are locked into a battle for the soul of this generation, for the soul of this nation. If the prophets keep stretching the soul of a generation will return and there will be revival. Hallelujah. The prophets have to understand the more, there's more of a purpose to what you're doing than just an election. We're in battle for the soul of a nation and the soul of a generation 
which will affect the souls all over the world. And so this is what's on everyone's mind. And, and though I'm not just a political prophet or preacher, I'm not anything like that, just that, but when Elijah confronted the soul for fought for the soul of a generation, he had to confront kings. When, when Moses was fighting for the deliverance of the soul of a whole nation, he had to confront a whole government. And so this is why the prophets are addressing this. But it is about souls. Never forget this. So the, I want you to listen to this. The Lord spoke this to me. And see, well, let me say this. If the prophets will not quit stretching over the generation, the soul of that generation will come back. It will return to this modern, this young generation. And there will be a revival. The fire at the Red Sea, the fire that fell on Mount Carmel, all speaks of revival. But the prophets are responsible for bringing revival this time. It's in the, it's in the stream of the prophets, the prophetic, to bring the revival. Because we, have, we, were, we are responsible for restoring the soul, reviving the soul, the minds of a whole generation. The breath that makes our bodies live, the breath makes our bodies live, but the soul gives us our reason to live. Yeah. Keep that in mind now. The breath makes our bodies live, but the soul gives us our reason to live, and the spirit which is first gives us the power for it all. Hallelujah. The soul of a generation has been taken. Something happened to Adam's soul, or he would have never let that serpent into that garden. And he sure would have never let that serpent speak words. Something happened to Adam's soul, or he would have never let that serpent enter his garden. He surely wouldn't have let him spoke words. When the Lord God, the Lord God, all capitals, which is the soul of God, the Elohim of God. When it was the, the soul of God that was connected in covenant with Adam. When he walked into that garden and called for him, Adam, Adam. The Lord God said to him, where are you? For fear had taken his soul. Fear had taken Adam's soul and replaced his faith until he hid God. Hallelujah. You're listening to me now. Listen close now. Until he hid himself from God. Then the Lord God asked Adam, Who told you you were naked? Words. Words. It was words that had taken. In this political climate, the serpent has come in. Under direction of the dragon. That's very important that you hear that. In this political climate right now, the serpent has entered in. And he, has, he is under the power and the direction of the dragon. Satan was outside the garden. He couldn't enter Adam's garden. So the serpent covenanted with the dragon and entered into the garden. Now I hope you're listening to what I'm saying. And I, and I know I'm speaking to a prophetic crowd right now. And so you all have prophetic ears to hear. I want you to think for just a moment. There is a political party and, they have, and they're covenanted with a dragon. A dragon. All you have to do is think of the nation who's whose icon is a dragon. And so now there is a serpent that is covenanted with a dragon and they have entered in to the garden because the dragon could not enter the garden. Yeah. 
Satan couldn't enter himself into the garden. Adam would have thrown him out. So the, so the serpent, see the serpent acted on his own. Or it wouldn't have been right for the Lord God to tell him a curse was on him. If he had just been a dumb animal used. But the scripture says he wasn't a dumb animal used. And everybody needs to quit saying that the heads of this political party are just puppets and pawns. Because they're not dumb. They have covenanted with a dragon. So somehow I heard a, a, a shout of an amen through the cameras. I heard that in the spirit just now. And I'm going to tell you something. They, ha they have covenanted. Stop saying, well, see, because if the serpent had have just been a pawn and just taken over by the devil, by Satan himself, the Lord would have never looked at the serpent and said, now there's a curse on you for what you've done. Because does he would have just said, you poor dumb animal. But he didn't. Because the scripture was plain to say that the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field. He lived out in the field outside the garden. And he talked to Satan and they agreed. The dragon and the devil, uh, the serpent agreed. You say, why do you know it's a dragon that was out there? Well, we see that in Revelation, the first aspect of subversion or the first aspect of the overthrow that Satan uses is the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. So it's the dragon. And what would the, what would the serpent have been? Listen, the serpent would have been drawn to a like spirit, a like being. A dragon would have been the father of a serpent to him. He would have looked like him. And so now you understand, put this over in the political realm, you have serpents, a brood of vipers that have covenanted with a dragon. I hope people are hearing this prophetically without me spelling it out. And so they have covenanted with a dragon. Now I want you to listen to this. The dragon, okay. I have to be like the president right here. China. <laughs> man shall not, or man shall live by every word. That's the inspired word that God breathes, that God says, that comes out of his mouth. This is the word is the God-breathed word that comes out of God's mouth. This would be the prophetic breath. Man shall live by every prophetic breath filled words that come out of God's mouth. This is why Elijah did what he did to raise that boy from the dead. This is why right now in this world we, we do what's called mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation on a person who is unconscious why is that we got that from God listen to this close it's because when you give someone mouth to mouth you put your breath into another one's lungs to start those lungs expanding you put your breath into another's lungs to start it expanding so guess what you are the breath that started that life back up again in that other person. They forever have your breath in them somewhere. It's very important. God put his breath into Adam to start his lungs expanding. So the first breath in Adam's lungs was the breath of God. And God said, so there is the inspired prophetic word that was carried into Adam's soul. His mind, his will, his emotions. And his soul told his body to start breathing with God's breath. God's breath started Adam's lungs and God's prophetic declaration for him to have dominion and so forth gave his soul a purpose 
and a reason to live. God doesn't just bring the breath into your lungs. He also brings with his prophetic word, with the word part of that breath that is carrying it into you. Like today, he's giving you a reason and a purpose in your life to live. Breath makes the body live. Words gives the soul purpose. Now, Man, I'm reading this so out of order. <laughs> okay. Yes, I am. I mean, I've read this completely out of order, but you get it. Hallelujah. We're getting it, right? Okay. Now, the prophet must preach this generation with their words. The soul of God that breathed through the prophets must come in and stretch themselves on a generation of people by speaking so they can see, hear, and talk. So the, the prophets must speak to this generation prophetic words so that the soul of God that breathes through the prophets can come in and stretch themselves on a generation of people by speaking so they can see, hear, and talk. Not only speak to this generation, but watch now. The prophets must now begin to speak to the spirits that are stealing this generation. Remember when the Lord God came in the garden and he said, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen because of what you did. This will happen. What you did, this will happen. This was the, the Lord God is the soul of Elohim. He's coming in pronouncing harvest. So the prophets right now who are speaking the soul of God to a generation are now not only su supposed to speak revival words, we're supposed to speak reviving words, we're supposed to speak these, these prophetic power words to this generation who's lost their soul, but we're also supposed to speak to the spirits that are stealing the generation and tell these serpents what their harvest is. If the prophets won't speak to the serpents, the brood of vipers, and tell them what they're harvesting, then we're only prophesying half of what we're supposed to be doing. We're only telling half the soul of God. Now people talk about, well, we need to speak the whole counsel of God. Then you must speak his soul of what he has to say. When he comes on the scene, he had something to say to Adam, his wife, the serpent, uh, everything. So we must begin to speak not only revival to a generation, but also harvest to the brood of vipers and the, and the spirits that are causing all of this. And also, not only speak to that, but we have to begin to pronounce harvest on them also. And they must, watch now, the prophets must prophesy about the future. So we have to start prophesying about the future. What future? The coming revival, the, the billion souls that will be saved. You, know, so you prophets have to begin to start prophesying not only what's going to happen this way, this way, but we have to now start speaking to the future. There's three types of prophetic utterances that has to be made. You have to prophesy over a generation that lost their soul, stretch yourself on them, begin to show this generation what you see, what you hear, how God talks, how this is happening because breath, they're only walking around and breathing bodies, most of them, but they don't have a purpose in their soul because they lost their soul. So we have to begin to preach and speak prophetic words and stretch ourselves. The prophets must stretch themselves over a generation of people and start speaking this and then you have to not stop there. You have to immediately turn and look at the serpent and tell that spirit what harvest they have coming, how they will fall, how that will never happen. They'll never, they'll have to crawl the dust. They'll have no more legs any longer to raise themselves up on and walk through a generation and put them back in the dust. Then you have to turn and tell that same spirit and begin to prophesy in the future where those spirits can't go. They can't go into the future. They can't go. 
though they're shadow beings, they're past beings, they can't go into the future. They hang out in the cemeteries and the graveyards. They're witches, they're warlocks, they're all these kind of dead things. But you start prophesying their harvest and the future of where this generation's going. We're going to a place where the seed of the woman crushes your head and bru you bruise his heel. They're going to a place where their mind will see the crucifixion, the, the death, the burial, the resurrection, the payment in hell, everything so that can be raised up with him to sit with him in heavenly places. This has to be the prophetic proclamations and declarations of the prophets that are out there right now all over cyberspace all over social medias, all over television. We must begin to prophesy for there is something coming, says the Lord, that he, and the Lord says, I have told my servant Moses, as I live, says the Lord, my glory will fill this earth and I'm going to have it fill the earth, says the Lord, and I'm counting on the prophets to speak my soul. When you speak out, thus saith the Lord, you are speaking the soul of God to a generation. Keep stretching, keep talking, but prophesy in a threefold way because a threefold cord is hard to break. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a shout and a praise. Now, they not only have to speak this way and prophesy this way, but the, prophet, the, the prophets, we must prophesy. Uh, we must prophesy if you're, if you're prophet, and when you prophesy in the future, the way the Lord God said the seed of the woman is coming to bruise your head, the seed of the serpent's head, and he will bruise your heel. Talking about the crucifixion, he's talking about the deliverance of a generation. We must prophesy the intervention of a generation and their deliverance. We have to begin to prophesy deliverance. Hallelujah. Once those words are out there, all the fallen spirits are locked in combat with the words of the prophets. And what they're doing is match. When the prophets prophesy deliverance and they prophesy these kind of things, what's happening is, is you have, you have put the demonic forces and the demonic spirits that are trying to take over nations, peoples, uh, countries, whatever they're trying to do, you are putting them and locking them, forcing them into battle, watch, with the soul of God. You, I don't know if anybody heard that, but you're, you're forcing them when you prophesy this way. You are forcing these demonic beings to lock themselves in battle with the soul of the Almighty. And they, have, they find themselves trying to fight the soul of God. When this happens, they are left like the 850 false prophets on Mount Carmel. They are left with power, no power, powerless. They are left because they have met the mind of God. Hallelujah. And they are severely limited. This generation is afraid and they're hiding from the soul of God. Because they have had a serpent take uh, talking to them. They've had a serpent talking to them for a long time now. It started taking the woman, especially talking to the woman. This is concerning abortion. Until they are confused enough to eat of the fruit. This started happening especially in about 71, 1971. This serpent began talking to women, talking to women. Remember, the woman was deceived. The man was not deceived, the Scripture declares. He knew better. But watch this. The man stood by and let the serpent talk to the woman long enough without intervening. And he knew the whole time. Genesis 3, I think about verse 6, said she turned to her husband there with her. And he did eat. He was standing there. Watch this. 
So they began to listen long enough till they became confused and started eating of that fruit. Now watch this close. The man, however, who does not bear children. Was far enough removed and is far enough removed from the situation to see the deception and stop it. Now I speak of lawmakers and politicians. You are not held guilt, guiltless, for you are to blame. The men knew better. They knew better. It was men that facilitated the selling of babies' parts. It was men that did that. The woman was convinced it was part of, it was her body, this, this, until she began to eat of this lie. But the men took advantage of it. They are to blame. And now it's even like I, 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 someone wrote in and, and said about, a, uh, they had had an abortion years ago and, and asked me to pray. said, I, am I beyond redemption? I just wanted to cry. I just, I thought, I wrote with all my heart. I said, no, you're not. First John 1, 9, and I started in on the scripture because this is confusing enough. This came from a serpent's tongue, dear, dear sisters. But you know what? That baby holds no malice toward any of you. None. And it'll be waiting on you in heaven. Right now, we have a job to do, and you're part of it. And I'm telling you something. No, you're not beyond redemption. Oh, if I had the words to tell you how God loves you. <laughs> There's not a sin that you, if you'll repent of it, that he won't forgive you and cleanse you of that sin. That means even the guilt of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I'm speaking of men who not only used uh, women, children. I'm talking about crooked politicians who brought all of this about all for self-gain. They are to blame. Is anybody with me today? Is anybody hearing all of this today? Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and put this name out there. I heard the name. Rydell, Rydell. I'm not sure what that means yet. I'm going to keep moving on and we'll come back maybe to that. But this is what the Lord began to speak to me. I want you to listen to this. He said, a pandemic known and a pandemic grown, incubated in a cell. For 14 days more and there will be an open door. I heard Singapore, mercy and grace that the wave not slap you in the face. New York City, such a pity. Your leaders have brought you down. And yet, not all the way to the ground, for I will still have revival there. Though your leadership looks like a bear. Get ready to, re to rejoice as I reverse Pro-choice. <laughs> Hallelujah. For time is limited now. Then I heard again this morning, Rydell Reno. I heard those two names. Rydell Reno. Rydell Reno. Hallelujah. Come in and play for me, would you? Hallelujah. I hope everyone has is, is, uh, got your prophetic ears on today. A lot has already been said, and a lot will be said. Two presidents, says the Lord, then two inaugurations, says the king. There is definitely going to be news of JFK. Look for it and wait for it. Though shocking it may be, Stirring up a hive of angry bees. Exclamation points. Exclamation points. Rydell Reno. Forthcoming. Exclamation point. Exclamation point. 
gouging into your arms, says the Lord, fabricating lies to deceive you. Forty-two months of blessings I sent, and all you were glad, gouging into your arm, a ploy to make men mad. I can still bless you. You do not have to sin to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron. For I am still here, and I only can make you live. Inquire of me, says the Lord, and I will drive out the disease. Only inquire of me. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for this day. We declare today it is a prophetic day. A day of great prophetic revealing. A day of great prophetic uncovering. For Lord, what the news will not say, the Spirit of God will tell. And what the news will not say, the Spirit of God has opened their cell. For what the news will not tell, the Spirit of God will say. And hear the Spirit of God. It begins today. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujahs to His name. Hallelujah to Jesus the Christ. He is forever the same. We lift up our voice and we declare that He is Lord. And we declare that His mighty word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Angels, you go forth and help these blessed ones and loved ones across the nation's span. Go ahead and stretch out and show them God's mighty hand. Hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Great powerful I am glory to God let's give God some praise in the house how we give him praise in the house how we give him praise in the house hallelujah just a little bit more we'll see if God what else he wants to say here I hear Terry, 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 yes, I hear Terry, for though you have lost your way, Terry, and though you seem to be struggling to come through the brush and the vines and the bushes, and you become entangled in things around you in this life. I still have my hand outstretched, Terry. Take hold of my hand and I'll pull you back into life. If you do not reach and squeeze my fingers as they're reached out to you today, sooner or later you'll lose sight of my hand in all this bramble and brush and briars and you will lose your way. So take hold of me today. Take hold of me and live. Take hold of the life that I have to give. For I will use your talent, and I have used it before. For now is set before you a magnificent open door. Walk through it, live clean, live holy, and stand up tall and erect. For this is the time of your coming into the, to the vision and the focus and the walk it's your time right now Terry so reach out and let's go hallelujah hallelujah I heard Mark and Mike Mark and Mike for hear this says the king for you were mine. 
from the time you were small forever you were mine step back into my footprints I've left them deep so your eyes mark stand up and begin to walk with me hallelujah hallelujah I heard a Clarice or a Claire or a Clara you're the parents of one of these named know this says the king of grace my promise I made you is still the same I'll bring your children in I'll bring your sons back home for this I have promised you says the Lord and I backed it by my throne be glad for the prophetic voice and be glad for the words you hear for this is the time you'll surely rejoice before this coming new year. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Now I heard the name Sheila. And I heard this Sheila I think has been missing for a while. Are you? They're not uh, like abducted or anything. But sometimes the parents wonder. It's from them in a long time. The Lord says you're going to hear from them now. I'm going to see to it that they call, they get in touch. And so you'll know that I am on my job and on my watch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Now, I don't know who this Leon is. It's either a Leon or a Lonnie or both. But I believe you're a preacher. And I believe you're a preacher that has not, you're not preaching. And maybe you've burnt out or something. I'm not sure about that right now. The Lord hadn't said that to me. But it's either a Leon or a Lonnie or both. But you are a minister. Watch this real close. You see my, my hand? This is the way a hand came through the camera one time at me. I never forget when Kenneth Copeland stuck his finger up in that camera and said, You. The Lord said to do that to you. You are now called into the ministry. Come on and let's get with it. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Ricky, Randy, and Ronnie. Ricky, Randy, and Ronnie. <laughs> it's time for you to quit living wild like you want to. Oh, you're not just, you're not just terrible, but you, you just, you live by the thought that hits your mind. And there's a Ronnie that's being healed in their body. Death will not have you. This is another Ronnie. So Ricky, Randy, and Ronnie, so come on, jump on in. <laughs> it's time to run. So get ready and come on in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Let's all over the world right now lift our hands and praise God and thank Him for this 11th hour today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God had something to say. Man, He's had me talking in rhyme for a long time now. And sometimes it's hard to stop. It's hard to stop when you're talking in rhyme. Because once you start talking in rhyme like that, you seem to want to do it all the time like that. You just begin to prophesy and rhyme and song because a psalmist will do these things. And you'll hear when I begin to talk and rhyme, God is bringing you things. He brings you gifts. He brings you joy. And He will surely restore what you were sure the devil destroyed. But he's going to bring it back. And you'll see it bigger and better than ever. So know this, says the Lord. He's better than the post office. He'll deliver no matter the weather. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So prophets, now you have to remember, begin to prophesy to the soul of a generation. Begin to prophesy to the soul of a generation.
Put your eyes on their eyes, your mouth on their mouth, so they can hear and see their mind has been stolen and taken. Begin to prophesy, all you prophets. Men, women, begin to prophesy. Stretch yourself on a whole generation of people so that they can begin to see what you see. Speak what you speak and hear these mysteries. You are speaking the soul of God to this generation. And you're, you're forcing the enemy to fight on a battlefield they can't win on. And then turn and prophesy to the spirits that are stealing the generation and tell them to crawl the dust. And then step into the future and prophesy the deliverance of a generation. Do it the way God did it in the beginning. Breath is for the body, but prophetic words are for the soul. Breath makes the body live, but prophetic words gives the soul a purpose and a reason to live. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So Lord, we thank you for this day on the 11th hour. I thank you for your I thank you for your coming to the earth. I thank you, Lord, for your birth. That, Lord God, that you brought us good tidings of great joy. Unto us was born in the city of David the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Yes, you have something. You said a Mark and a Mike? Yes. Someone wrote in and said, <clears throat> Mark and Mike, ha ha, my brother and I. It said, we have been sharing in this prophetic journey the last two months. Two months. They're brothers. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Mark and Mike. Mm -hmm. Well, we rejoice with you, Mark and Mike. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Austin said, today is the day of family. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. What is that song? Fall on your knees or here, you know, and it says, and the soul felt its worth. Oh, holy not. Really? Krista's now part of the audience out here. And she said, <laughs> instead of playing drums, she said it's, she's been singing. Oh, holy not this entire service. What is the words right there that it says? I'd like to do, say that before, at least say it before we go off the air today. It says, O oh, holy night, the star, this is the night. sin and era pining. And the soul felt its worth. Thrill of hope, a weary world rejoicing, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Is this not prophetic? Fall on your knee. Hallelujah is what it says. Is it hear the angels singing? Hear the angels' voices? O oh, night divine. O oh, night when Christ the anointed one, and his anointing was born. Hallelujah. So the, the, the soul of a generation, we're locked in battle for the soul of this nation and the soul of a generation. Prophets prophesy. It is your responsibility to bring revival now. You have to revive the soul of a generation that they can hear. Hallelujah. You had something else? Well, come on. We're, we're, this is, you know it's unscripted, so. <laughs> you said Ricky, Randy, and Ronnie. Yes, I Someone did. Someone wrote in and said, Ricky, Randy, and Ronnie is what their grandmother would call all three of them because she couldn't remember, I guess, who was who, so she would just say all three names together. Ricky, Randy, and Ronnie. Really? And we also had Terry watching, too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many have believed God is talking today on the program so. like this? Hallelujah. Wow, you'd hate to just go ahead and, I mean, well, you don't hate anything, but you don't want to close. Well, I hate the devil. Yeah, he's earned it. Hallelujah. Well, I'll, I'll wait just a moment. We'll see if there's anything else. It's been so good to be with you on the 11th hour today. 
the time of day, the song. What about the song, Breath of God? Breath of God. The Lord wrote that. Just wrote that. Said that about Ricky, Randy, and Ronnie. Yes. You had said that about calling into the ministry. We are we are going to follow that that example as we give. Now you know when you give, don't just give just because you think you should. I mean, it's always good to give, but give with a purpose. Yeah. yeah what you have, man? Said, yeah. Yes. God came with three gifts, the garment of praise, yes. the tunic of authority, yes. and the robe of righteousness. <laughs> yes. And that's what we should prophesy, the, that they robe their self again with these gifts, because Jesus restored it all. Hallelujah. 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 Prophesy the garment of praise, the tunic of authority, and the robe of righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was the garments that the enemy stole from the, in the story of the, of the Good Samaritan, which is actually the story of Adam. Amen. Man, it's been a rich program today, hasn't it? Yes. So we're going to follow suit, right? Well, let's go ahead and do that. Lord, we prophesy right now. Yes. That this generation will begin to robe themselves yeah. in the robe of righteousness again. They'll see it and they'll be able to talk about it, Lord. That to know they're right with you. That there's, and once they've made Jesus the Lord of their life and applied your precious blood to their life, that there is nothing that is wrong between them and you. And so, Lord God, right now we do, we prophesy that they will robe themselves in the robe of righteousness. They will robe themselves in the garment of praise and the tunic of authority and lord i give you praise for it we speak that over this generation robe of righteousness garment of praise tunic of authority you know when you think about those three garments you know jesus wore three when you think about those three garments you're talking about the end of depression the end of lack and the end of fear think about that hallelujah Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. And it's something how that flows in threes. You are delivered. You are delivered. Go ahead and say, I receive my deliverance. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, as you give today, give with a purpose. What are you believing for? What are you believing God for? You know, some things, it's obvious what the seed is. If, if you know, you can, you can show yourself friendly and you'll reap friends. You can, you can even lay hands on the sick and you can say, I sow this for healing for my body. And that can happen. You can do, you, you, but there are some things that you cannot even think about. You say, what kind of seed would be for what I'm needing now? But you can take uh, currency or something. And if you don't have currency, you can give a thing. You know, there's some people that had nothing to give, but they would bake pies and carry them. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, think of what they're sowing. Hospitality, food, kindness, everything. And they never were alone. Never. And so, but you can take currency and name it whatever you want it to be. You can just name it. And say, I don't know what to sow for this, so I'm calling you this. Because currency, giving, money, as we say, has no soul. It's not good or evil. It's not money that's, that's uh, the root of all evil. It's the love of it. And most people that don't have money commit that sin. And so uh, uh, there are, there's as many that don't have it committing that as there are that, that's got plenty. And so... Money don't have a soul. Now, it can buy and sell souls, but it don't have a soul. So you, it can't love you back. So it's the root of all evil because all it does is just promote people that love it, just heap it on themselves. But you can take that and say, you know, Lord, I call this, whatever it may be, if it's a, it's like one, the prophet said, you know, if it's a $5 in your face offering, to the devil, $5 in your face, devil. 
whatever it may be, and you say, if it's a thousand dollars, if it's a hundred thousand dollars, you can look. It depends on the on the person. You know, they're giving out of what what takes faith for them. And so you say, I call this the seed for. And when you do that, remember what the angel appeared to Cornelius and said, your prayers and your alms have come up as a memorial. It builds a memorial in front of God that he looks at all the time. And he remembers that. Hallelujah. So today there's been an altar built for giving and, and receiving and revelation knowledge. So today as you give, we want to believe with you for whatever that is. And so I'm going to pray Luke 6 and 38 over you right now. And I want you to pray it too. Some of you just simply need increase in your life. Well, increase begins with thanksgiving. Start thanking God. Be grateful to God for what you have. So, and the Lord will increase what you have. Hallelujah. You know, I, I ought to say something here out of Luke 6 and 38. Is, can we put that on the screen? Is that possible today? We've been dealing with some things. Well, watch this. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Now, now look at that real close. I just want to take just a moment. Not because of desiring, but, but because of, of clarifying. Watch this. It says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Notice the key word here is it. Give and it. It what? What you gave. Give and what you gave shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom, for with the same measure that you meet with all, it, there's that word again, what it, what you gave, shall be measured to you again. So, when you give, whatever it is you're giving, it, that gift, will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give the it that you gave back to you? You think about that now. So if it's increase and you give, the it will be given back to you. So if the it is a $50 bill, for instance, then it shall come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. If, and if you give by the spoonful... Then it shall be given back to you by the spoonfuls. If you give by the shovelful, it, dump truck, it. So it's whatever the it. Now the it can be the intent of your heart. What is it? The woman who gave the two mites, she gave more than everybody there because it was out of her need and all of her heart. I think there was an intercessor wrote, uh, wrote in and and it was one of those we were just praying over the you know praying over the giving and I think they gave five dollars and said I'm an intercessor that was so precious to me because I asked the Lord you know you you need intercessors and so I, I and prophets ought to understand the significance of prayer ministry and so I we just started praying and it was so precious but that was an intent of their heart they gave like the woman. So it, so men turn around and give to you out of the antenna of their heart. And some of theirs is dump truck loads. Yeah, come on up and say something. See, this is precious. Giving is precious. It's not a chore. You know, last week someone, uh, Krista felt led to give the testimony about when she was needing Christmas money. And yeah, she I remember $6 that. Oh, 65, 65 cents. 65 cents, excuse me, 65 yeah. cents, and reap 600. And 50. And 50, yeah. 650. I want to get my numbers right. Yeah. Well, there was a couple, they gave $30 last Tuesday, and by that evening, 
They they were needing a car. By that evening. By that afternoon, they went to look at this car, and they were. I feel like they were going. They might have wanted to settle to get it, but while before they made the deal, they were just looking at it because they were needing more money for it or for a, a, a better car. And the phone rang, and someone that was not. You wouldn't have expected it. It was a new door. A new door. Opened up. They sewed 30, and somebody said, this person is led to give you $3,000 on your car. They Just like 30, that. By that, that evening. And by that evening, they had a, we want to give you $3,000 for this car. Hallelujah. Car. You know, I'll tell you something, and then I, I know we, we need to close here, but I'll tell you something about this. The Lord quickened to me. When Robin and I first started out in ministry, uh, we just loved God. and we're just, just whatever He wanted us to do, you know, we just, we just smiling. We're, we're smiling and clapping, going everywhere we went, just, just so grateful to be alive serving God. And, but, you know, I played music for a living. Both of us did. And, and I just couldn't go back. I couldn't go to the places I was in. Now, some people are called into certain ministries, but I, I couldn't. I had to leave. And so I, we were really struggling. And um, they, you know, we, here in America, we say they turned your lights out. Uh, you know, but it's not turning the lights out. I think in, in England they have a better phrase for it. It's called a power cut. You know, that really describes it better, a power cut. They cut your power off, <laughs> the electricity coming into your home. So we had had it cut off and on so many times, trying to survive, didn't know how to live, but we wasn't giving up. We were looking at God. And I remember... Our lights, or we call it light bill, our, our light bill had lapsed into five months. Now, can you imagine going five months and they don't turn your lights off? Now, I didn't intend on not paying it. I just didn't have it to pay. And so I was believing God. Every, and I knew it back in those days, if it, it was on a Saturday and it was five months, and I knew it had war, war on my mind so, and I knew that if they didn't cut them off today, we had lights till Monday. Well, I, I just told Robin, I said, let's just, we just laid down across the cover, just, just laid down that afternoon before dark and just fell asleep, you know, as it's easier to fall asleep than stay depressed so bad you beat your head on the wall. Because we didn't know how to believe God a lot. We were learning. Well, <laughs> there was somebody in our band who, bless their heart, they didn't have no teeth. And their mother came to me and said, if you'll build me a set of cabinets, because I could build things like that. Said, and I was trying to, I was building them then. Said, if you'll build me a set of cabinets for my house, I'll buy him some teeth. I said, all right. So we did it. I built the cabinets and he got some teeth. Bless his heart, he used to sit back there and play. And this was after we saved and all playing in a Christian band. He sat back there and play and he'd hide his teeth, you know, and he'd smile and praise God. He was just precious, man. And so he got his teeth. She got her cabinets. We're five months behind on our light bill. I think I'm telling it in, the, in kind of the order it went. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. But anyway, we're laying there and all of a sudden we wake up to a knock on the door. And we opened our eyes and go to the door. We still had lights. This was wonderful. <laughs> so we opened the door and there he stood. Did he have his new teeth then smiling at us? But he had got a check through the mail. Now he was, he was broke as we were, but he got a check through the mail. And he said, when I got this check, the Lord told me, he said, go over there and pay your brother's light bill. That was the most unexpected source in the world. He didn't even have it to buy his teeth. But he came over and paid a five-month light bill. And we had lights. And the whole time we're giving, we're scraping up change, whatever we need to do, this is what we're talking about. 
God has a flow, and now you're hooked up in it, in a prophetic flow. Hallelujah. You're in that Elijah, Zarephath, meal barrel, never running dry blessing. Amen. So as you give today, here it is. I'm praying it over you now. Say it out loud wherever you are. As I give, it shall be given to me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto my bosom. For with the same measure that I'm giving, it shall be measured to me again. I believe it. I receive it. I call it done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I remember years ago when Austin first started, he hadn't been here all that long. Austin that plays guitar, you heard him speak a minute ago. And he, was, he had a prophetic word. You gave it to him that he was going to prosper and he's going to do well and this was going to happen for him and you told what was about to happen and when we left church that day he was driving this old truck he used to have and he called it the breeze and if you ever got in it you'd know why I mean now listen it was breezy in that thing I mean this was in the 60s you know it was a 60s something model truck wasn't it what is it Oh, 72. Well, I was close. And so it was set and broke down on the side of the road out there. And there's the prophetic promise. And there he sits. And so you're wondering, man, did I hear this? Was it the next day? Was it that week? Was it that was a Sunday? On Wednesday on his birthday, somebody gave him a Mustang. Come up and gave him a nice car. And that's how this works. The pro nothing can stop it once it starts flowing. Hallelujah. So those of you that are tithing, are you ready? We're praying the tithing prayer. Say it out loud. As I bring all my tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in the house of the Lord. I prove you now, Lord, if you'll open me the windows of heaven, pour me out a blessing, that there's not room enough to receive it. And rebuke the devourer for my sake, that he not destroy the fruits of my ground. Neither shall my vine cast forth its fruit before its time in the field. And all nations shall call me blessed, for I shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Now say, I believe it, I receive it, I call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you're watching me on robindbullock.com on the website, you'll see the Give button. You can click there and go to Secure Place and Give. If you're watching me on YouTube, it's in the description. Just click on that, and it'll take you to the same place, and you can give there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's been good to be with you today, and I'm looking forward to hearing your, your praise reports and your and the healings of your body. A lot of healings, I think, happened today, I believe took place today not just one but several and so I'm looking forward to hearing from you the whole team and I want to tell you something something you need to say oh when 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 you walk up I'm ready to hand you the mic yes I want to get the whole uh, uh, 11th hour <laughs> not 7th hour 11th hour <laughs> team up here if we can come on up here real quickly and um we want to, on this 11th hour uh, broadcast today, and Ronnie's taking his time, and he's, he's, he's going to get left out right here if he don't come on. And so, we'll spread this out. Yeah, yeah, I'll just we'll stretch it a little bit. And uh, I want to, and Linda's sitting over here. She's, she's the scribe for the ministry. She scribes down uh, all the prophecies. The camera crew, uh, which is our family also, um, up in the sound booth, uh, John that does 20 jobs, I guess. <laughs> I don't know how many jobs he's doing, but a lot of them. But on behalf of all of us here at the 11th hour, we want from the, from the bottom of our hearts, yes. as we say, Hallelujah. we want to wish you yes. and your family a wonderful, yes. merry, merry Christmas and remember God is absolutely good. Shalom, shalom. Hallelujah.